Right, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to the stream. Oh, I just had a nice little message from uh, Sylvia that she misses me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm here in the UK, so I'm here for four weeks, and then, um, then I go back to Germany and spend my time then in Germany for Christmas and New Year, so I'm really looking forward to that. No, I can't drive to Zarbrücken Station yet. I don't think that's in Train Simulator yet, Sylvia. But um, I'm looking forward to when it might. Well, it might happen. Anyway, hello to anybody that's watching and uh, anybody that watches in the future on YouTube. Um, hopefully, we'll have a few more coming up in the uh, in the chat. And uh, where are we? Well, we're at um, Arosa. Well, we're on the Arosa Line. We're actually in a place called Kerr. Um, which is the uh, one terminus for the Arosa line. So I'm going to click continue here. Prepare your train and set your train destination display to Arosa and then proceed to platform 2 to allow passengers to board. Okay, let's do that. My chat's gone off. I can see it now. So um, what we've got to do, we've got to go down here. And we've got to set this to Arosa by pressing all these buttons. Um, is it that one or is it that one? It's that one. So that's done. Go outside. And uh, turn the lights on. I think that's correct, having all three on. I'm not really sure about that. And we've got to go down to uh, platform two at Kerr for the passengers to board. We're on a lovely scenic route this afternoon. Um, we've still watch the speed here. The speed's 20. So the first part of the line is actually in the street. Um, the Federal Railway is just over the right of me uh, but uh, this is a meter gauge so it's a different gauge and uh, we're actually going to be traveling through the street to begin with which is interesting so we just got to pull up here and let uh, the passengers on So this should do for that. Open the doors. Let the passengers on. So um, yeah, we're going to be following the the valley, uh, the River Plessier Valley, um, all the way up to Arosa. It's a very steep um, uh, incline all the way up. It's one of the most scenic routes in Switzerland, in southeast Switzerland, and it's part of the uh, Raetian Railway. Hopefully, the streams are looking okay. Just streaming on one PC here today, so uh, I've got the luxury of having two PCs to use in Germany, but uh, just using the one here. So, we've got a bit of a passenger view going on here as well. You can see what the driver's doing. So as I say, it's a pretty steep gradient all the way up, and um, initially they were going to use some sort of rack uh, system, but that was uh, that was all shelved, and so it's just purely adhesion all the way up now. Glad that it's all looking okay, yeah, Sylvia. Thanks for that. So I've got a couple of um, couple of request stops as well here. So. Um, I've got to be on my lookout to see if anybody wants to get off or get on on a couple of the stations, so that's always interesting. I'm a terrible train driver. Uh, much better doing some flight simulation, actually, but, uh, but there we are. I shall do my best. I, I really enjoy driving the trains as well. 
It's going to take about an hour and ten minutes to get up to uh, Arosa. Passengers and I boarded the train. Please proceed to your next timetable to stop at Lang Vis. Okay. That's pretty cool then. So let's get going. And the speed limit here is 20. I've actually got a control here. So it's like a speed limiter control. Which I can uh, set to 20. It prevents the... Uh, I can set it. Prevents a loco from uh, exceeding the speed limit. Which is always handy with me, because I'm bound to exceed the speed limit. It's almost like a cruise control, really. So here we are, going through the streets of Kerr. There's a station coming up called uh, Kerrstadt. And I've got to be on the lookout to see if uh, anybody wants to do a request, or wants me to do a request stop there. So I don't know about fancy being a cyclist going up this street and having a an, you know, big uh, train coming up behind me. If you're not used to it, it must be a bit of a shock, I would say. <laughs> yeah, cruise control. It's cool, isn't that? So we're not going to be on the uh, on the road part of this route for too long. It uh, changes into normal normal track. As I said, it's meter gauge. So we're coming up to the uh, what we call the key oh, and the lights are flashing, which means I have got to stop here. So I'm going to, have to be a little bit careful. Make sure I do stop in the uh, in the proper area. There's somebody waiting to get on. So this does as I say follows the uh, the river, the river Plessier. So, open the door, let the passenger get on, passengers get off or whatever. Well that was someone with a camera I think, Sylvia, I don't think she's waving at me, she just wanted to take my picture. <laughs> Okie dokie, right, doors have closed. So, we're going to be uh, on our way again. Still a 20 kilometer an hour uh, speed limit. Actually, we're probably going into 25 now here by the look of it. So, I can go onto the cruise control bit here and. Uh, Turn that up to 25. This is the old part of the town now. We'll be leaving the town altogether soon. And we'll also be leaving the actual road. I think the road that branches off to the left is the road that goes to Arosa. And we won't meet that again until we're actually nearer our destination. So, um... Arosa is 25 kilometres away and we've got to make up um, about 1100 metres in height, which is just over a, kilo uh, just over a kilometre. Uh, so it's fairly steep gradients, but very scenic. 
Hello, Nick. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you, Nick. Yeah, all well, thank you. Well, I'm okay. I think Sylvia's had an IKEA experience fixing up some uh, fixing up some furniture in Germany. So whether she's okay or not, I don't know. But it seems to have all worked out all right. This is the uh, the little depot in Kerr coming up to, which is uh, where they do a little bit of trap maintenance, that sort of thing. Hopefully you're all okay, Nick, and uh, everything's going okay with your recovery. I know uh, it's probably a long job. Hopefully things are all right with you. So we're uh, we're into thirty now. So again, I can go down onto this little cruise control thing and put that up to. 30 on the uh, oh, it's really hard to adjust so I don't know if that's right or not probably the exceedance well that looks okay and we're on the norm we're on the uh, the normal sort of track now so uh, but climbing up all the time and we have got a view from um, Inside, in the first class at the front, from the from passenger eye view. So as I say, this is all part of the uh, Raishan Railway, and uh, the Abula line is as well. And I really liked the Abula line when it came out on Train Sim. And this is very scenic, like the Abula line, although it hasn't got any uh, spiral tunnels. It's got lots of loops. It's got to make up the height uh, by sort of looping round on itself. I'm oh, glad that uh, things aren't too bad with you, Nick. And as long as the surgeon's pleased, I guess he's seen a lot, hasn't he? So he for sure knows if things are moving along as they should be. So that's that's good. So going through, uh, starting to go through a few tunnels and galleries and things now. Um, got to be a lot of protection for the line because a lot of this, uh, a lot of these, uh, these hills, rock hills, and a lot of the terrain is actually not that safe. It's uh, it does tend to move around a bit. So they, so I read, and you've got quite a lot of landfalls and and stuff. So. Um, Got to be a, bit, a little bit careful. Make sure everything's protected. So we've got up to 33 now, as far as the speed limit goes. That's a funny speed limit, 33 kilometres an hour, isn't it? So I'm just going to put that up slightly. Oh yes, this is definitely one I would love to go on for real. I say that every time. Well, I did. Uh, I did have a look at how much train journeys cost in Switzerland. Well I looked at the price of train journeys um, around the uh, near Interlaken and how much it costs to actually get a train just to go up into the mountains and everything and the prices are unbelievably high. I know that prices are, are just high in Switzerland anyway but oh that's a crazy price. So I think if anybody has a holiday in Switzerland, I think they're gonna 
have to exchange their money and get lots of Swiss francs for sure. Because they're going to need it. So it's climbing up. We've got the river below us still. Basically follow that uh, all the way. Got to slow down to uh, 30 just for... I presume we're slowing down for 30 because of this bridge. Oh, I'll slow down too much. Yeah, this bridge doesn't look uh, too special, does it? So we're oh, momentarily speeding there, and we're back to 30, back to 33 again, 33 kilometres an hour. That really is quite a strange speed limit. So it's a very leisurely uh, journey, isn't it? Going at this sort of pace. I think it's about 20, just over 20 tunnels and galleries on the route altogether. Um, some of them are reasonably long, but not as long as the tunnels on the Abula line, that's for sure. The ones that, the ones that spiral round, they're really uh, quite long. I think we got run over there. Ooh. <laughs> the first stop is going to be um, a station called Luen Castile. That's the first stop. And all the stations along here are are built in the same style, almost like a Swiss wooden chalet style. Really very nice. They they look like my chalet style cuckoo clock that I've got uh, downstairs. <laughs> So we've got a 30 kilometre speed limit coming up, but uh, okay at the moment. We've certainly gained some height already, haven't we, by the look of it. So coming into the 30. Tracks leveled out here a little bit. It's the thirty now. And looks like we're going by a passing point here. I'm exceeding the speed limit. Oh dear. Sorry, everybody. Crossing one of the very many viaducts on the route now. And going into the 33 now, so. Oop. 
so I can turn on my panel lights inside the uh, loco if I want. Fairly modern uh, lo loco or, or set, I suppose. Really, it's like a what we would call a multiple unit, isn't it? Really. the river a long way below now. We're coming into a 30 again. a nice, uh, look at that. Impressive. So yeah, the actual, um, the actual terrain around here is pretty it's pretty scarred because of uh, landslides and what have you and um, the ground itself isn't totally stable um, lots of the viaducts and bridges have had to been they've been worked on over the years apparently uh, to actually because they were starting to sort of move move around and of course the track was starting to move around there's been lots of repairs and refurbishments done over the years I think keep the bridges and viaducts uh, stable because that's just how the land is here it's uh, it can be pretty uneven there's lots of water as well running down from the hills and the mountains which tend to cause uh, havoc Yeah, it must be fantastic to do the journey. And uh, Nick, of course, when you when you come down, you've got to keep this leisurely pace as well. So I think it's a lot easier to drive going up because uh, the cruise, this cruise speed cruise thing, isn't going to work going down, I guess. And you've just got to do keep the speed limits with the brakes. So I don't think that would be that easy. I love these sort of routes so in the train simulator it's my sort of uh, thing having a having something very very scenic I love that so we've got Luen Castel coming up and I, I heard a little beep beep which means someone has rang the bell although this is not actually a scheduled stop um, someone wants to get off here so I've got to, I've got to stop We can have a look at these uh, lovely stations and the and the way they're built. So we're back down to thirty. You can see how steep it is here as we're coming into the station.
very sort of long narrow platform here isn't it? I'm not sure where I'm exactly meant to stop to be honest. Although it can give me a bit of an indication there on the uh, on the display on the bottom. I will stop there. And we'll uh, open the doors. But we'll also go out, have a look at the station. If I'm not, if I lose time or something, I'm not too worried about it. Um, all these stations have got an inscription on, and apparently that one means I wrote it down what that one means the motto means where there's a will there's a way and uh, all of these stations have got uh, these mottos on and they're all sort of built in this very sort of chalet Swiss chalet like style really attractive uh, building isn't it really beautiful um, <laughs> it's loads cheaper isn't it you can see all the views as well uh, right so let's get uh, back in the cab um, apparently Luen Castel sorry Luen itself the village of Luen is very near it's very very near the station but uh, Castile is a bit further up in the mountains and if you if you want to get there you've got a You've got to be pretty good at hiking, apparently. <laughs> so we're coming at 35 km an hour limit now as we leave this station. Well, this is one of the longer tunnels, I think, that we're going into now on the line. About 400 metres long. And we're up to 35, so I could actually tweak this... Uh, forward maybe oh, could do to pull that back though to see it oh 35 I'm speeding again it's a good job I'm not crazy about getting all the points on this game because I, I, would, I never get very many points I lose them all because I speed Rolls-Royce holiday for push bike money. That's a good one, Nick. I've never heard that before. <laughs> the valley, the name of the valley, translated means Valley of the Forests. So there are lots of... Uh, Lots of forests, of course, all the way up. Going back down to 33. These speed limits are so. they just change just very, very slightly. Um. And I guess it's because of the different bridges and the, and the curves of the line, I guess.
Right, I'm going to attempt to play a little bit of music in a minute, and uh, there's a little compilation that uh, is actually, I'm going to play it from the PC rather than putting it through my little mixer here. So I don't know where it's going to start from, but uh, I'm going to attempt to do that in a minute. I've just got to slow down for this 30 kilometer an hour bit that's coming up. In fact, if I just take it down to 30 on here, then although I'm going to lose a little bit of time, I won't have to worry. So, let's just see if we can manage this. So, what we need to do is mute the desktop audio. I should be muted for you. Unmute that. Oh, something heavy.
Can you hear me again? Oh. Let's get rid of that. So that was, um, was that St. Peter as we, uh, we stopped at? I think it was. Oh, my screen keeps going dead. On oh, my chat as well. And was that what the inscription was then, Sylvia? Was it, uh, don't be scared of the world? Huh? Was that what you said the inscription meant? Anyway, we've got a station here called Peist. So I don't think I've got to stop at this one, but I'm going to anyway. Good that you can hear me again, that's, that's fine. I've got too many buttons to press. It's hard enough driving, driving the train here. <laughs> So let's uh let's just stop here anyway. And we'll go out and have a look and um look at the station again and see what we can see on this one. They're all sort of they all are very similar, aren't they, in their the way that they're built. Oh, hold on. So that's another little, I guess that's uh that's difficult to read for me. I guess that's the inscription there. And it says nineteen fourteen as well, which was when the uh when it was actually built. The line was um the line I think the line they started building the line in nineteen fourteen and I think it took about three years. So anyway, that's another one there. So um, you can see the road there winding around. Anyway, we've got to go. I'm probably late as it is now. Oh! I've messed that up because we're actually still in a we're still in a 30 never mind gonna be getting into the 33 kilometer an hour speed limit very shortly Apparently, all around the station that we've just passed, the the ground is very, very unstable, and um, you've got to be very, very careful about uh, uh, you know slippage of the earth and stuff. The next stop will be at Langvis, and uh, Langvis is famous for its uh, really, really big viaduct. Which they actually light up sometimes. I think that for sure they have got uh, lights on it, and certainly for Christmas they will be lighting it, lighting it up. So 
So the track's levelling out a little bit here, so I'm coming up to a 30. Thirty kilometres an hour speed limit is coming up. It's going to be purely for this, for this bridge, and um, that's definitely the reason. As soon as we crossed it, we'll be back into thirty-three. So I don't know what the other ins was that. What was the other inscription then, um, Sylvia, on the station that we just passed? I did say that they've all got these in, um, inscriptions or mottos. So the track did level out a little bit here, but now we're going to be starting up on a gradient again. Another pretty big viaduct there. Did I turn the desktop audio back on? Yeah, that's okay. So we're well into the journey now, and um, coming up to Langvis shortly. And then we're going to cross the valley. We've been on the left-hand side of the river all the way up so far. Uh, at Langvis, we we cross the Vardukt. You can just see, actually, in the background there. You can see the Vardukt there. And uh, we cross the valley, and then we end up in, on the right-hand side of the river then. Everybody still still okay? And that's my chance given up. The ghost. So we're coming into Langvis now. Everything's still uh, still streaming okay. Ah, oh, okay, Nick. That's that's fair enough. Because there's a there's a delay. I think there's about ten second, maybe more than that, or fifteen second delay or something. Um, so you're seeing it a little bit after I've sent it. So. So now we're at, at uh, Langvis. Again with that uh, with that chalet, chalet style station building, sort of dark dark wood, 
weathered, very weathered. Right. So, let's go and have a quick look at the station. It's great here so you can fly around. So, I think maybe Sylvia's gone to sleep, I'm not sure. Successful stop, please proceed to your next timetable destination. I'm already late anyway, because I thought it would be, because I'm sort of having a look round. I get the sack when I get to the uh, my destination, I guess. And there's the uh, the Vardet that we're going to cross in a minute. And um, as I say, that's one of the longest ones, the Langvis one. Um, 62 meters in length, no sorry, 100 meters long, 62 meters high. It's the largest, uh, I think it takes a record of the largest type of that type of viaduct in the world apparently. And maybe it's the way it's constructed. Um, certainly a pretty famous one. Okay, so let's cross it. It's an old way of telling. So let's get a good uh, let's get a good view of, of uh, crossing this viaduct. That's amazing. And you can see the lights all around it. Those those little dark bit. Well, I can anyway, but maybe you can in 720p. But uh, as I say, it does light up. So we've crossed over now. To the other side of the valley. Doing a 90 degree turn here now. So we'll be following along now um, on the right hand side. I'm not asleep by the way, okay. <laughs> Let you off then. Um, next station will be Litz, uh, Litzeruti, which sounds very Italian. As I say, I'm already late, but it uh, doesn't matter. We can push this up to 30. 35. Oh, it's not a very good view, is it? I'll change it all now, because on the other side. I'd like to live in there, that house there. That'd be really nice. Still climbing pretty severely.
It's a real leisurely drive, isn't it? Like you said, Nick. Let's uh, Ruti is a passing point again for uh, for trains. We haven't met one yet, but um, I have a feeling we're going to meet one at the next station. Train on its way down. So here we are, and there's a train. Okay, passengers are out, so let's go have a quick look uh, on the station. So there's another one. They got 1914 on it, so all these all these stations were uh, were built at that particular. Time when the line was uh, created, Litz, Litz the Ruti, successful stop. We can get on our way now. Okay. So, 33 kilometers an hour limit now. Ah, uh, 30. Coming in to 33. Okay. Not, thir not that fast. Oops. Let's leave it there. <clears throat> so, we've got lots of loop looping round to do now. You can't translate it. Makes no sense. Oh, okay. It's obviously sort of old world uh, Swiss, I guess. And you said sometimes the, you can see the other train lot down in the uh, down in the valley there. It's amazing how much uh, height the line makes in a short period of time. So, Arosa is the next stop. It's 
still looping around, making up the height. Still see the train in the distance down there. A little It looks like it's uh, miles below us now. the passing point here I'll have to look at um, Wikipedia or something, Sylvia, and see if uh, they say what all the translations are then. So not too far to go now till we uh, arrive at Arosa. I know we're going to be passing a man-made uh, lake. There it is. Um, that lake is actually uh, uh, creating electricity apparently for the area. It's a man-made one I think but um, responsible for some hydroelectricity.
Right, not too far to go now to Arosa. Got a couple of uh, tunnels to, to make. And I think uh, one of the tunnels actually goes under the town. Uh, so the railway runs under the main part of the town, which is quite interesting. But um, tourism is, of course... Uh, the main industry. We can go a little bit faster, can't we? Although we're down to 30 in a minute, I'll stay at 30. I should have arrived at Arosa exactly now, and I'm a little bit late, so I'm going to be a few minutes late. So there's two lakes um, in Arosa as well. You've got the uh, the Unter Sea and Obersee, which mean uh, under and over, don't they? So uh, the first one, I don't know if we can see the first one as we go past, but just behind the station there is a, a lake. And it's the way the Swiss, uh, that's the Swiss seaside, isn't it? Being landlocked country. That's how they enjoy their uh, the water and the water sports and everything else. So here we are, just trundling into a rosa now. So there's a the town. And there's a tunnel, so we're going, we're sort of going under the tunnel, through the tunnel, under the town. Oh, I've got lots of warnings coming up here. Basically, to tell me that I've got to stop, I would imagine, because there's a terminus. So slow down. I'm not sure exactly what all those mean. As usual, I'm driving the thing and I'm technically inept to be driving it. <laughs> but I drive it anyway. I think it's easier to fly a plane. Maybe not. I don't know. So here we are, it's coming into a rosa. So I hope you enjoyed the ride. I had fun anyway. And as I always say, I would love to do this train journey for real. Just says platform one, so it doesn't matter exactly where I stop I presume let's make it about there if I haven't gone too far so there we are we're opening the doors what I'll do I'll just put pause brake on so that uh, the whole thing is frozen or does it just go to the menu so here we are in a rosa Oh, let's unpause that so I can get out and just have a quick look at the uh, at the lake. So this is a terminus station, and uh, it's the end of the line. So thanks for joining me this afternoon. Hope you enjoyed the little ride through the valley. And I don't think this station's got any inscriptions or anything. Cause it's not. Uh, it's not in the style of those other stations, anyway, isn't it? Is it? It's uh, more of a modern creation. So, thanks for joining me. See you again. And um, not sure what I'm going to do next time. Not sure if I'm streaming next week, but um, 
It'll either be Train Simulator or or Flight Simulator. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for uh, popping by, and thanks, Sylvia, as well. And uh, see you again soon. I'll probably see Sylvia very soon. Cheers, Nick. Thanks for watching.